Among all those evils, anti-Semite wave is the only one that lasted for over 2,000 years and continues to our present time. The perpetrators believe that it is their God-granted right and the law of their country to hate and persecute the Jews. We have seen how God punished the European nations which persecuted the Jews. He punished them through the Black Death, the Thirty Year War, the wars of Napoleon, Mussolini, Hitler, Stalin, World War I and World War II, etc. In the two world wars over 75 million people were killed. One quarter of the population of Europe perished through the bubonic plague. Muslims had thus far killed 60 million Christians in Asia, North Africa and Europe and possessed their lands until today. The Turks occupied many European lands and almost destroyed half of Europe during their five-century reign of continuous attempts to Islamize Europe. Many people might not see the causes of those atrocities and calamities as direct results of anti-Semitism, but a careful study of the history of the Jews in the Old Testament would definitely confirm it. The Bible has plainly states, and whatever nation to which they will be in bondage I myself will judge, said God, and after that they will come out and serve me in this place, Acts 7, 7. The Arabs and Muslims also consider anti-Semitism a divine right granted to them by their God Allah. They too began to feel the scourge of God in their own lands and by their own people. I strongly believe that ISIS is the scourge of God and Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is the Adela the Hun of today. It all started through the so-called Arab Spring. Today, Muslims are fighting and killing Muslims all over the Middle East and African, in Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, etc. Muslims are engaged in constant warfare against each other and against non-Muslims in Nigeria, Somalia, Sudan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, in Kashmir, India, and plotting terrorist attacks in Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, and the Americas. They are going down on the same road that the Europeans have gone before them, persecutions of the Jews. Millions upon millions are going to lose their lives through those wars on terror. For long time, only America stood with Israel and for that reason it has become the greatest nation in human history and blessed abundantly by God. Unfortunately, the current president who is a wolf in cheap clothing has tried to turn America against Israel. His foreign policy and attitudes toward Israel are creating a nuclear-capable Iran. But, for a few years in office by a Muslim sympathizer, God is not going to forget what America has done for Israel. God bless America and bless Israel and punish their enemies, Amen. Under the current American administration, anti-Semitism is practiced openly in American colleges but cloaked as anti-Zionism. Anti-Semitism is illegal but anti-Zionism is allowed. What kind of hypocrisy gives rise to this double standard? Here is a quote from a documentary video posted on YouTube under the title, The New Face of Anti-Semitism on Campus. Israel is under assault in North American college campuses today like never before. Anti-Israel activities to alienate, demonize and delegitimize Israel are increasingly crossing the line into anti-Semitism, in the form of hate speech, harassment and intimidation. Canada supports Israel but pro-Hamas rallies in Toronto, Calgary and other cities are tolerated where Arab Canadians openly spew their hatred toward Israel and the Jews. Some of them said they are ashamed to be Canadians. All will deny that Hamas is a terrorist group. In France and Germany, Jewish synagogues are bombed, Jewish community centers are burnt, Jews are attacked and killed in daily basis, and they who march the streets chant death to the Jews, Jew pig come out and fight, Allahu Akbar, and carrying placards emblazoned with phrases like death to Israel, Hitler you were right, etc. Writing about the Holocaust by a person who has lacks critical knowledge on the subject, me, would not only be a difficult but an impossible task. Having said this, I would like to add that no one today could claim to be ignorant and innocent of that greatest genocide ever committed in human history. The Holocaust stands out as a crime of its kind because since the first man walked on the surface of the planet Earth there has not been such a well-planned operation which scientifically and systematically, almost completely executed the one particular ethnic group. 
If anyone told you that the Holocaust was a crime committed by a single tyrant called Adolf Hitler, you have been lied to. If you heard that it was only the Nazi regime that responsible for the Holocaust, you have also been deceived. If you heard that almost the entire nation of Germany participated in that hideous crime you have heard just a half-truth. If someone said to you the whole continent of Europe responsible for the Holocaust then such a person has told you some of the truth. The whole truth is that 20 countries in Europe involved in what is the greatest crime in human history and what is the greatest stigma against all of humanity. It is impossible for one single regime of government to commit a crime of such a huge scale if it had not been assisted by other nations. Out of the 9 million Jews of Europe two-thirds of them were killed in the Holocaust, 6 million. In order to lessen the burden of conscience many names were invented and attached to the Holocaust. Some historians considered it to be the outcome of the so-called World War II. If it wasn't for the Holocaust there would have not been World War II. If it wasn't for the Holocaust, the Third Reich wouldn't have come to power in Germany. If it wasn't for the mass murder of the Jews of all European countries, the Nazis wouldn't have invaded Poland and caused the beginning of the war. Hitler chose Poland because it had the biggest population of European Jewry, 3,500,000 Jews. Hitler and his Nazi regime were not intending to engage in war with any other country. Their sole aim was to invade any country housing Jews with the intention to capture them, ship them to the extermination camps, put them in the gas chambers, and mass murder them. Some of their killing centers began with killing 1,000 in a day until they reached a peak of 6,000 a day at the close of the war. This mass murder operation lasted not for one year or two years, but went on for seven years, 1939-1945. Great countries such as United States of America and Great Britain, when heard about the undergoing complete annihilation of the Jews of Europe dismissed the information as rumors of fearful Jews. Reasons proffered by some Holocaust experts are essentially baseless and could not be accepted even as a slight possibility. Some historians said Hitler murdered six million Jews because he was a madman. Some believed that he looked at the Jews as not ordinary human beings but noxious parasites whose existence posed a clear and present danger to humanity. When he was a young man, he joined a satanic occult group which taught that certain fallen creatures could appear as human beings and do untold harms to ordinary human beings. Hitler thought the Jews were those beings. He believed that if the Jews were allowed to live they would destroy the entire human race. Some historians argued that Hitler wanted to get rid of the Jews of Germany because of their steadily increasing numbers in Germany. This reason is the farthest one from the truth, because at that time there were around 500,000 Jews in Germany while there were 3,500,000 Jews in Poland. As we mentioned, in order to reach a target-rich environment, Hitler invaded Poland, which set off the Second World War. There were more Jews in Ukraine than in Germany. There were 101 more reasons given to account for that greatest crime in human history, but none of them were convincing or even remotely close to logic. In order to fathom the real reason one should be a believer in the God of the Jews and read their Bible. The same fallen being who tried to destroy the Jews through the Pharaoh of Egypt, Haman of Persia, Antiochus Epiphanes of Greece, Titus and Hadrian of the Roman Empire, the Spanish Inquisition, the Crusades of the Roman Catholic Church, and Muhammad of Islam and his many caliphs, is the very one who possessed Hitler and inspired him to kill God's chosen people. Each and every time, the Jews were rescued by God and emerged victorious while their persecutors were defeated, forced into retreat in perpetual shame. God has promised Abraham that he will bless those who bless him and curse those who curse him, Genesis 12, 3. God's gifts and calling are irrevocable, Romans 11, 28-29. When Pharaoh attempted to destroy the Jews, God destroyed his army and the Jews celebrated the feast of Passover. When Haman tried to wipe them out they emerged victorious, forever marking that day in history as the feast of Purim and with Antiochus Epiphanes they now celebrate the feast of Kanaka. Hitler and his satanic Nazi regime suffered the same fate and in the same stroke the Jews returned to their homeland, 
ending their wandering and suffering with their arrival at the land of their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, Moses, Aaron, Joshua, David, and Solomon. While he was in prison in 1923, Adolf Hitler wrote, the personification of the devil as the symbol of all evil assumes the living shape of the Jew. And so he the Jew advances on his fatal road until another force comes forth to oppose him, and in a mighty struggle hurls the heaven stormer back to Lucifer. Germany is today the next great war aim of Bolshevism. It requires all the force of a young missionary idea to raise our people up again, to free them from the snares of this international serpent. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf, he continues to write, hence today I believe that I am acting in accordance with the will of the Almighty Creator, by defending myself against the Jew, I am fighting for the work of the Lord Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. Hitler wrote his book when he was in prison and published it in 1925. When he came to power he attempted to destroy an entire human race, the Jews. He was influenced by a 2,000-year-old affliction, anti-Semitism. It was like snowball that kept rolling for centuries until it reached its apex in Nazi Germany Holocaust, which led to the mass murder or genocide of 6 million Jews of whom 1.5 million were children and 2 million were women. A network of over 40,000 facilities in Germany and German-occupied territory were used to concentrate, hold, and kill the Jews. Hitler thought that he was acting according to the will of God, but only Satan could have inspired such wickedness against innocent people. The Jews did nothing to deserve their treatment in the hand of the Nazis. Today, the new Nazis are the Iranians and the new Hitlers are the Iranian leaders who have vowed to wipe Israel off the map. It is hard to imagine what the Jews have done to deserve this wrath. This charter is also found in the second article of the Palestinian Hamas constitution, albeit with a slight difference. They want to, instead, drive all the Jews into the Mediterranean Sea. Their prophet Muhammad promised them that the last hour will not come until Muslims will kill all the Jews. In 1939 Germany began its invasion of Poland, Belgium, Holland, and Luxembourg. Soon thereafter, copies of a secret order were sent to all German authorities wherever Jews were found. The Jews were to be forcibly displaced to big cities with railways stations. They were then stripped of their homes and properties. Jews were to be registered according to their ages. Jews above ten were ordered to wear the Star of David on their clothes. In 1941 all Jews were forced to live in ghettos. In addition to being provided with very little food, they were strictly forbidden from seeking work or leaving the ghettos under any circumstances. Crime rates increased and the Jews became fair game for the locals. These measures were to be executed in preparation for a final plan. Whatever the Germans had inflicted on them thus far was nothing new to the Jews. Nineteen centuries of persecution had prepared them well for this. Until this time, the Jews were unaware that the Germans were preparing them for mass murder and complete extermination of their race. Some historians argued that only Hitler and his close Nazi leaders were aware of the final verdict in their schemes, with the common German in complete ignorance. Yet other historians went to the extent of denying even until this time that Hitler's closest generals had full operational knowledge of his plan to systematically execute the entire Jewish race. The Holocaust was the systematic, bureaucratic, state-sponsored persecution and murder of six million Jews by the Nazi regime and its collaborators. Holocaust is a word of Greek origin meaning sacrifice by fire, Holocaust encyclopedia, German churches, and the Nazi state. The Nazis kept their plan hidden from the Jews for long time. The first groups of Jews were told that they were going to be transferred from their ghettos to new settlements in the East. Other groups were shipped in crowded trains and taken to the places that were prepared for their execution. The first Jew to suspect the intention of the Germans was an 18-year-old boy. He informed his Jewish friends that a huge system of mass murder for us was set up everywhere and there was no escape out of it. When questioned by his friends and some Jewish leaders he could not prove his allegations. 
Some Jews began to harbor doubts when they realized that none of those who were taken away had returned back to tell others about the new settlements. After a year some of the leaders somehow learned about the evil plot against the Jews. They did not know what to do. Should they inform other Jews, should they ask them to run away, should they pick arms and fight? They understood that, every and any action on their part would only speed their destruction. The leaders found themselves in a helpless and hopeless situation. They discovered that the Jews were held captive and hostage by the Nazis. They were placed in reservations or concentration camps. The leaders began to meet in secret and try to find out how to stop such evil schemes. They decided to delay or slow down the deportation of the Jews to the centers of killing them. They even prepared to bargain with the German officials who were responsible for the deportation. Some leaders suggested to pay the Germans whatever amount of money they could afford in order to convince them to slow or stop the orders of transferring the Jews to the killing centers. The leaders tried to buy time hoping that the war would end by defeating Germany. Some leaders proposed to be given the right to choose who would be sent to the killing centers. When the officials agreed the leaders began to choose the elderly instead of the young Jews because the old people would have fewer years to live than the youth. The leaders began to bargain on reducing the number from 1,500 every day to 1,000. They argued that the youth were a highly useful labor resource. The Germans did not just put the Jews in isolation. They forced them to work for free in their war effort. Not every leader sought ways to delay their extermination. Some leaders refused to sign the deportation orders and either got killed by the Germans or took their own lives. If the Germans sent order for 2,500 Jews and the leader refused to sign it the Nazi soldiers would raid the ghettos and take many thousands instead. Many people might get killed or injured in the process. The Jew learned by experience that to appease the Nazi German is a lesser evil than to oppose him. When it became undeniably clear that the Germans had decided to annihilate all the Jews, the Jewish youth resorted to direct confrontation and took up arms. They knew that they were under siege with no avenue of escape. Unfortunately, the youth resistance did not last for long before the powerful Nazi regime rooted them out. The Nazi battle-trained soldiers were able to destroy the few pockets of untrained and insufficiently armed Jewish youth resistance. The Jews were left alone to face their looming annihilation by the most powerful army at that time. The Roman Catholic Church was aware of German hostility and the systematic eradication of the race, but turned a blind eye. Some Catholic historians mention a few examples of specific churches helping the Jewish resistance or providing the occasional sanctuary for a few Jews. There was never any open condemnation or direct confrontation with the aggressors. Churches in Germany, Catholic or Protestant failed to do anything to save the Jews. The very least they could have done was to strongly recommend that they not to participate in the mass murder. Additionally a community-wide movement to help the Jews to escape out of the concentration camps or hide them would have been helpful. Throughout this period there was virtually no public opposition to anti-Semitism nor any readiness by church leaders to publicly oppose the regime on the issues of anti-Semitism and state-sanctioned violence against the Jews, Holocaust Encyclopedia, German churches, and the Nazi state. The Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Hajj Amin al-Husseini, came all the way from the Middle East to Germany to watch live the genocide of the Jews and congratulate Hitler and his top Nazi leaders for finding a final solution to the problem of the Jews. Al-Husseini was taken in a tour around some concentration camps and also visited the death camps of Auschwitz, Majdanek, Treblink, and Mothausen. In his memoirs, Al-Husseini mentioned that Heinrich Himmler informed him that the Germans have already exterminated three million Jews. In 1947 he declares, it is the duty of Mohammedans in general and Arabs in particular to, drive all Jews from Arab and Mohammedan countries, struggling against the common foe who oppressed Arabs and Mohammedans in their different countries. It has very clearly recognized the Jews for what they are and resolved to find a definitive solution for the Jewish danger that will eliminate the scourge that Jews represent in the world, Cesarani 2007, pages 54-57.
First we should explain what that wicked Mufti means by a final solution to the problem of the Jews. The final solution to the problem of the Jews was the secret code that the Nazi regime called its extermination protocols. In 1939, some top leaders of the Nazi regime met in secret conference known as the Wanzi Conference, which led to the finalization of the plot to destroy the Jewish race, which they called the final solution. In the months following the Wanzi Conference, the Nazi regime implemented their component plans for the final solution. Jews were deported transported by trains or trucks to six camps, all located in occupied Poland, Chelmno, Treblinka, Sobibor, Belzec, Auschwitz-Birkenau, and Majdanek Lublin. The Nazis established two types of camps, concentration camps, and killing or extermination camps. Concentration camps served primarily as detention and labor centers, killing centers, also referred to as extermination camps or death camps, were almost exclusively death factories. All the Jews who were brought at the killing camps were sent immediately to death in the gas chambers, with the exception of very small numbers chosen for special work teams known as Zonderkommandos. The largest killing center was Auschwitz-Birkenau, which by spring 1943 had four gas chambers, using Zyklon B poison gas, in operation. At the height of the deportations, up to 6,000 Jews were gassed each day at Auschwitz-Birkenau in Poland. The SS considered the killing centers top secret. To obliterate all traces of gassing operations, special prisoner units, the Zonderkommandos, were forced to remove corpses from the gas chambers and cremate them. The grounds of some killing centers were landscaped or camouflaged to disguise the murder of millions. In 1944, the SS liquidated the inhabitants of the Jewish family camp, virtually all of whom had been deported to Auschwitz-Birkenau from their ECNstadt. The manner through which those mass murder operations were conducted were so horrific and hard to believe that human beings like you and me are capable of inflicting such pain and evil on innocents. German Jews were not being punished for any overt crime. In the entire history of the Jews in Europe, the Jews are perpetually the victim, silently enduring discrimination without objection or rebuke. Muslims killed millions of Europeans, invaded and captured many European countries, raped the women, enslaved the children, robbed properties, etc. The Ottomans captured many European lands and destroyed half of Europe but no one retaliated or accused them of crimes against humanity. Today, there are four million Muslim Turks in Germany, and none of which are attacked for the sins of their fathers. Present day sees only the Jews being attacked on the streets, in their community centers and synagogues, and in broad daylight. The Holocaust was the epitome of modern cruelty. It was hatched from the homes from which hung crucifixes. It was executed by people that were for most part physically identical. It is very hard to imagine a human with a conscience and empathy, willing to look into the eyes of an innocent child, a frightened Jewish woman, and a wizened old Jewish couple and still proceed to load them in a gas chamber, day after day. The majority of prisoners deported to the Operation Reinhardt killing centers were killed by locking them in stationary gas chambers into which truck engines pumped deadly carbon monoxide gas. A minority of prisoners were killed by shooting. Over a million Jews, were killed there by November 1944. Some Jews were selected from each transported group and forced to help in the killing of other Jews. Those forced workers were compelled to remove dead bodies from the gas chambers and bury them in mass graves. In 1943, the workers were forced to exhume the buried bodies and burn them in huge trenches on makeshift ovens made of rail track. Michael Birnbaum, an expert on the Holocaust, said the entire Germany has turned into a genocidal state. All Germans were employed by the Third Reich in the Holocaust, police, soldiers, railways workers, postmen and women, doctors, nurses, professors, teachers, students, church leaders and members, employees of financial institutes, 
the Hitler's Youth, the League of German Girls, etc., etc., etc. Every arm of the country's sophisticated bureaucracy was involved in the killing process. Parish churches and the interior ministry supplied birth records showing who was Jewish, the post office delivered the deportation and denaturalization orders, the finance ministry confiscated Jewish property, German firms fired Jewish workers and disenfranchised Jewish stockholders, universities and schools expelled all Jewish professors, teachers, students. According to Saul Friedlander not one social group, not one religious community, not one scholarly institution or professional association in Germany and throughout Europe declared its solidarity with the Jews. Each and every Jew, man, woman, elder, child, or infant was interred in concentration camps before their eventual transfer to the death camps. During this interim period, many were subject to all kinds of abuses. They were beaten, starved and raped by their guards and the locals. Concentration or labor camps were collectively known as ghettos. The term ghetto originated from the name of the Jewish Quarter in Venice, established in 1516, in which the Venetian authorities compelled the city's Jews to live. Various officials, ranging from local municipal authorities to the Austrian Emperor Charles V, ordered the creation of ghettos for Jews in Frankfurt, Rome, Prague and other cities in the 16th and 17th centuries. Life in the ghettos was fairly unbearable. Overcrowding was common. One apartment might house several families within. Plumbing broke down, and human waste was thrown in the streets along with the garbage. Contagious diseases spread rapidly in such cramped, unsanitary housing. People were always hungry. Germans deliberately tried to starve residents by allowing them to purchase only a small amounts of bread, potatoes, and fat. Some residents had some money or valuables they could trade for food smuggled into the ghetto, others were forced to beg or steal to survive. During the long winters, heating fuel was scarce, and many people lacked adequate clothing. People weakened by hunger and exposure to the cold became easy victims of disease, tens of thousands died in the ghettos from illness, starvation, or cold. Some individuals killed themselves to escape their hopeless lives. Before the final solution mass murder operations officially began in 1941, the Germans kept the Jews in the ghettos. Typical Jew fatalities were due to shootings, starvation, and disease. Deportations from the Lodz ghetto to the Chelmno killing center began in 1941. German police will carry out roundups in the ghetto. Hundreds of Jews, mainly children, the elderly, and the sick, are killed on the spot during the deportations. Most of the deportees were immediately murdered in large groups by poisonous gas. The Nazis changed to gassing as their preferred method of mass murder because they saw it as cleaner and more efficient than shooting. Gassing also spared the killers the emotional stress many mobile killing squad members had felt shooting people face to face. When the Jews of Germany were wiped out and their ghettos were fully cleansed the Nazis turned their attention to Jews of other countries. At the same time that ghettos were being emptied, masses of Jews and also Roma, Gypsies, were transported from the many distant countries occupied or controlled by Germany, including France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Norway, Hungary, Finland, Romania, Italy, North Africa, Yugoslavia, and Greece. The deportations required the help of many people in all branches of the German government. The victims in Poland were already imprisoned in ghettos and totally under German control. The deportation of Jews from other parts of Europe was a far more complex problem. The German foreign ministry succeeded in pressuring most governments of occupied and allied nations to assist the Germans in the deportation of Jews living in their countries. The systematic killings of the Jews were carried out in all German-occupied territories, throughout 20 countries in Europe, in what are now 35 separate European countries. The WANS protocol reveals that Germany was planning to carry its final solution to the Jewish question to the remaining European countries of Britain, Sweden, Spain, Portugal, Turkey and also its colonies in South Africa and Madagascar. Six million Jews were annihilated in less than five years. 
three millions were killed in Poland and over a million in Soviet Union. The Jewish victims of Poland were murdered through the gas chambers while most of those killed in Soviet Union were killed by mass shooting and their bodies were buried in mass graves. The other two millions were liquidated in the extermination camps, which located in Germany and its other occupied areas. Many more succumbed to starvation, diseases, beatings, and some were worked to death in the labor camps. Any person with three or four Jewish grandparents was considered a Jew and killed. Even Jews converted to Christianity or their parents or grandparents were counted Jews and sent to the killing centers and exterminated. Only those whose grandparents converted before January 18, 1871 were exempted. Before we proceed let us stop and ask ourselves, after all those horrific mass murders or genocides of innocent people who neither committed any crimes against any group of people nor started the wars, why the entire world still remained silent? Why the Allied forces were still believed that those reports were just rumors created by wild imagination of frightened Jews? America and Britain refused to come in the open and declare those reports until they were compelled to do so. Someone disguised himself as a German guard and entered one of those killing centers and witnessed the horrific mass murder of the Jewish children, women, and men. When he came out, he challenged the two great countries that if they don't act he was going to go with his first-hand reports to the media. Before he could go in public and publish his findings America and Britain published a joint report and confirmed the systematic mass murder of the entire Jews of Europe. On December 17, 1940, Two, the leaders of the United States, Great Britain, and the Soviet Union issued the first joint declaration officially noting the mass murder of European Jews and resolving to prosecute those responsible for crimes against civilian populations. Although the Holocaust became publicly known the world over, the cowardly Nazis and their collaborators continued their atrocities against the innocent non-combatants. German forces occupied Hungary in March 19, 1944. In April 1944, all Jews except those in Budapest are ordered into ghettos. Systematic deportations from the ghettos in Hungary to Auschwitz-Birkenau begin the following month in May of 1944. In less than three months, nearly 440,000 Jews are deported from Hungary in more than 145 trains. The overwhelming majority are killed upon arrival in Auschwitz. By May of 1945, the Germans and their collaborators had murdered six million European Jews as part of a systematic plan of genocide the Holocaust. When Allied troops entered the concentration camps, they discovered piles of corpses, bones, and human ashes testimony to Nazi mass murder. Soldiers also found thousands of survivors Jews and non-Jews suffering from starvation and disease. For survivors, the prospect of rebuilding their lives was daunting. With few possibilities for emigration, tens of thousands of homeless Holocaust survivors were housed in displaced persons camps. In the following years, many international and domestic courts conducted trials of accused war criminals. As we stated earlier, it is impossible for a single country as Germany alone to commit a total mass murder of such large scale if other countries did not help it. Almost the entire continent of Europe participated in that greatest crime in human history. In Hungary, Slovakia, Croatia, Bulgaria, and Vichy France, police, military, and gendarmerie officials were vital to implementing the German-initiated policy of deporting Jews resident in territories under their influence or control to the killing centers in the east. The Ustasa government of Croatia built its own concentration camps. By the end of 1942, the Croat authorities had killed more than two-thirds of Croatia's Jews, around 25,000, many of them in the Jasnovac camp system. Romanian gendarmerie and military units directly murdered and deported Romanian and Ukrainian Jews in the reannexed provinces of Bukovina and Bessarabia as well as in Romanian-administered Transnistria in Ukraine. Many people in German-occupied countries and regions collaborated with the German occupation authorities. Estonian, Latvian, Lithuanian, Ukrainian, and ethnic German collaborators played a significant role in killing Jews throughout Eastern and Southeastern Europe. 
Many served as perimeter guards in killing centers and were involved in the murder by poison gas of hundreds of thousands of Jews. Lithuanians, Latvians, Estonians, Belarusians, and Ukrainians spontaneously formed groups which the German SS and police then purged and reorganized. From the beginning, members of these partisan or self-defense groups killed hundreds of Jews as well as real and perceived communists. The German reorganized units became ruthless and reliable police auxiliaries that assisted the German authorities' civilian, military, SS and German police in the massacre of hundreds of thousands of Jews. The German authorities required the assistance of the Axis nations and of indigenous collaborators in the regions they occupied to implement the final solution. Axis governments, police, and military authorities aided in the roundup and deportation of Jews to killing centers, actively participated in the murder of Jews, and in several cases committed atrocities against their Jewish fellow citizens within their own national borders. Between 1933 and 1945, Nazi Germany established about 20,000 camps to imprison its many millions of victims. Labor camps, prisoner of war camps, transit camps, and camps which served as killing centers, often called extermination camps or death camps. The commandant of the Auschwitz death camp, Rudolf Haas testified during his trial how death by the gas chamber was conducted. According to him, Bunker 1 held 800 people, and Bunker 2 held 1,200. Once the chamber was full, the doors were screwed shut and solid pellets of Zyklon B were dropped into the chambers through vents in the side walls, releasing toxic HCN, or hydrogen, shouting and screaming of the victims could be heard through the opening and it was clear that they fought for their lives. When they were removed, if the chamber had been very congested, as they often were, the victims were found half squatting, their skin colored pink with red and green spots, some foaming at the mouth or bleeding from the ears, the gas was then pumped out, the bodies were removed, which would take up to four hours, gold fillings in their teeth were extracted with pliers by dentist prisoners, and women's hair was cut. Improvement we made over Treblinker was that we built our gas chambers to accommodate 2,000 people at one time. Those who were not murdered through the gas chambers at the death camps were killed by shooting or hand grenades at mass killing sites outside of towns. Before they were killed they would be forced to dig their own graves. A truck driver, who witnessed some of those mass killings by shooting, described the scene, as, one after the other, they had to remove their luggage, then their coats, shoes and outer garments and also underwear. Once undressed, they were led into the ravine which was about 150 meters long and 30 meters wide and a good 15 meters deep. When they reached the bottom of the ravine they were seized by members of the Skutspolizei and made to lie down on top of Jews who had already been shot. The corpses were literally in layers. A police marksman came along and shot each Jew in the neck with a submachine gun. I saw these marksmen stand on layers of corpses and shoot one after the other. The marksmen would walk across the bodies of the executed Jews to the next Jew, who had meanwhile lain down, and shoot him. Without a shadow of doubt it became obvious that the murder of six million Jews were not done by the Nazi regime alone nor by the Germans only, but almost more than half of the population of the old continent were involved and many directly and deliberately participated in that greatest genocide in human history. Those six million innocent Jews were not killed by some ancient Germanic tribe such as the Vandals, the Visigoths, the Ostrogoths, or the Vikings, or the Huns, or even by the Mongols or the Turks. They were not murdered by the jungle people of Africa, or the naked people living in the Rhine forests of the Amazon, or the Aborigines of Australia. They were mass murdered by the most civilized peoples on the world and in the mid-20th century. They were killed by the people who are intellectually and scientifically very advanced and who produced some of the most outstanding thinkers of modernity, Kant, Hegel, Marx, Einstein, and Heidegger. As the Third Reich began to collapse, thousands of prisoners in German-occupied territories were sent on forced marches to the German interior in order to prevent the mass capture of prisoners by Allied forces. Surviving prisoners described these brutal ordeals as death marches, due to the high mortality rate and the ruthlessness with which the SS guards shot those unable to keep up. 
Due to both the forced marches and the collapse of supply shipments to the camps during the last winter of the war, the death count among prisoners from starvation, disease and exposure increased dramatically. Historians estimate that nearly half of the more than 700,000 prisoners left in the concentration camp system in January 1945 had died by the end of May. Hundreds more died even after liberation because their bodies had sustained too much abuse to permit survival. In the last months of war, the discovery of the horrors of the German camp system by Allied units brought the staggering scope of Nazi atrocities to the attention of the world. As Allied troops moved across Europe in a series of offensives against Nazi Germany, they began to encounter tens of thousands of concentration camp prisoners. Many of these prisoners had survived forced marches into the interior of Germany from camps in occupied Poland. These prisoners were suffering from starvation and disease. Colonel William W. Quinn of the U.S. 7th Army said of Dachau, a death camp liberated by U.S. Army there are troops found sights, sounds, and stenches horrible beyond belief, cruelties so enormous as to be incomprehensible to the normal mind. Some trials of war crimes and crimes against humanity were conducted by the victorious Allied countries, USA, Britain and Soviet Union against some Nazi leaders. Unfortunately, many perpetrators of Nazi-era criminality have never been tried or punished. In many cases, German perpetrators of National Socialist crimes simply returned to their normal lives and professions in German society. The hunt for German and Axis war criminals still goes on today. The search for and prosecution of Holocaust criminals raises complex moral questions, as well as tangled problems of international law and jurisdiction. As they reach the end of their lives, the vast majority of Nazi offenders have escaped punishment. Actually, neither the defeat of Germany nor the liberation of the Jews from the concentration camps ended the horror of the Holocaust. Many people in Europe still continued to harbor anti-Semitic attitudes and are actively against Jewish settlements. Most Jewish survivors, who had survived concentration camps or had been in hiding, were unable or unwilling to return to Eastern Europe because of post-war anti-Semitism and the destruction of their communities during the Holocaust. Many of those who did return feared for their lives. In Poland, for example, locals initiated several violent pogroms. Majority of the people did not agree to the return of the Jews to their homes. Many countries in Europe and outside of Europe refused to accept the Jews as displaced immigrants of the war. Many Christians still believe in the old falsehood that Jews are Christ killers, that the Jews poisoned Christian wells, and that the Jews are guilty of the so-called libel blood the accusation that the Jews kill Christian children and use their bloods to bake their feast cakes. All those accusations were false and baseless. They were the products of the 2000-year anti-Semitic attitudes. Such unjustifiable hatred towards the Jews influenced even non-Christian peoples such as Hindus and Muslims. The 21th century Hindu thinker, Asho Rajanish claimed that Jews are guilty people, and their guilt is very great because they crucified Jesus, out of this guilt, they are always in search of their Adolf Hitlers, someone who can kill them. He asserted that only when Jews reclaim Jesus, they will be healthy and whole, and then there will be no need for Adolf Hitlers. Rajanish was not one of those Arab, Muslim, and Iranian Holocaust deniers. He admitted the Holocaust and did not deny its staggering number. But, he considered it lesser evil than the poverty of the Hindus in India and the struggles of Indians for independence from the British crown. In criticizing historical teachers of pacifism who have encouraged people to, just accept the situation in which you are, Rajanish has stated that living in poverty is far more dangerous, far more suffering than dying in a beautifully, scientifically managed gas chamber in Germany, and claimed that Hitler's violence was far more peaceful than, for example, the violence which erupted in India after independence from the British Crown. Hitler killed people in the most up-to-date gas chambers, where you don't take much time. Thousands of people can be put in a gas chamber, and just a switch is pressed. Within a second, you evaporate. The chimneys of the factory start taking you, 
the smoke you can call it holy smoke and this seems to be a direct way towards God. Those remarks were not made by a person who felt the horror of the Holocaust, but he still lesser evil than those who openly deny it. After all, what can we expect from a cult leader who was rejected and denounced by his own Hindu people and kicked out of the United States of America for his immoral teachings about free sex where men and women live together in a holy abode and practice sex as dogs? After their liberation from the death camps the Jews were left to face their uncertain future all alone. No country wanted to take some of them as refugees. Thousands upon thousands of Somalis, Eritreans, Sudanese, Iraqis, Syrians, Algerians, Turks, and Libyans, were transferred, admitted, and funded on taxpayers' monies, and enter daily into the USA, Canada, Australia, and Europe. In the United States, immigration restrictions strictly limited the number of refugees, homeless, displaced, and Holocaust survivors, permitted to enter the country. The British, who had received a mandate from the League of Nations to administer Palestine, severely restricted Jewish immigration there largely because of Arab objections. Many countries closed their borders to immigration. Despite these obstacles, many Jewish displaced persons attempted to leave Europe as soon as possible, United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, Washington, D.C. After the end of the World War II, the League of Nations became the United Nations. Many countries closed their borders to immigration of the Jews, other countries placed restrictions on the number of Jewish refugees, the Arabs did not want them to return to their homeland. Where would they go? There was a story of 53 Jewish orphaned children that no country wanted to accept them. After many correspondences and long waiting Canada agreed to take only four of them. Everyone knew that the Jews were forced by the Roman emperors, Titus, Hadrian and Constantine to leave their country, Judea, and go wherever they wanted to go. They strictly told by those wicked tyrants that if they returned back they would be put to death. Simply put, that is how the Jews became homeless and wandered in all nations for 19 centuries. Wherever, they went they were abused and exiled. Their blood was shed in every country of the world. After the greatest crime in human history was committed against them while the whole world stood and watched, they were required to start all over again. They wanted them to beg other nations to allow them to stay in ghettos in their soils and tolerate all kinds of abuses spewing from that sickening anti-Semitism. They wanted them to be once again a nation of ghosts and parasites. The children of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The children of Israel. The Children of the Most High God The Custodians of the Holy Scriptures, Romans 3, 2 God said besides Jacob I know no other nation, Psalm 147, 19-20 Now no one wanted them in his country, the world did not want them to go back to their homeland. The whole world said they shouldn't go back because the Arabs don't want them back. Where then should they go or what should they do? Until those questions be debated by the newly founded United Nations, the survivors of the Holocaust have to stay where they were and tolerate all kinds of abuses, pogroms, killings, and sufferings. For two years after their liberation from the death camps, the Jews' life hanged between heaven and earth. As the crisis escalated, the British government decided to submit the problem of Palestine to the United Nations. In a special session, the UN General Assembly voted on November 29, 1947, to partition Palestine into two new states, one Jewish and the other Arab, a recommendation that Jewish leaders accepted and the Arabs rejected. After the British began the withdrawal of their military forces from Palestine in early April 1948, Zionist leaders moved to establish a modern Jewish state. On May 14, 1948, David Ben-Gurion, the chairman of the Jewish Agency for Palestine, announced the formation of the State of Israel, declaring, the Nazi Holocaust, which engulfed millions of Jews in Europe, proved anew the urgency of the re-establishment of the Jewish State, which would solve the problem of Jewish homelessness by opening the gates to all Jews and lifting the Jewish people to equality in the family of nations. 
Holocaust survivors from displaced persons camps in Europe and from detention camps on Cyprus were welcomed into the Jewish homeland. Many of them fought in Israel's War of Independence in 1948 and 1949. Seventy-five years have passed and still many historians, sociologists, theologians, psychologists, criminologists, military experts in wars crimes, philosophers and professors of religious studies could not give satisfactory answers for the reasons that led the Nazi Germany and its collaborators and the citizens of those 35 European countries who participated in the Holocaust. The horrific methods by which over six million Jews were entirely annihilated without anyone to show solidarity with them have made the Holocaust to stand out as the greatest genocide ever committed against one particular group of people. The final solution for the Jewish question is a crime committed against God before it has been committed against his own chosen people. Everyone participated in that crime would never escape God's wrath, Romans 12, 19.